Church, say amen. amen. Church, say amen again. Amen. Church, say amen. One more time. Amen. amen. For the Father, one for the Son, and one certainly for God's Holy Spirit. Amen. amen. It is indeed a great privilege, pleasure, and honor to be here today. Amen. As we all assemble together as God's children in the house of the Lord to lift up the name of all things, which is Jesus Christ. Amen. I'm just so honored to be before you today to come and be a vessel of the Lord and to declare a word from heaven on today. I we'll first want to give honor, what well, honor is always due, to the head of this house, Pastor Carl Johnson, to uh, the First Lady, uh, Mother Rose, uh, to all of my fellow ambassadors of Christ and, and ministers, co laborers of the gospel, and to all of God's children. Amen. Amen. You all look so wonderful and beautiful today. Amen. Amen. I won't prolong the time. Let us go to the throne of grace for a word of prayer. To the Alpha and the Omega, to the beginning and the end, to the creator of heaven and earth, to the sovereign one, to the one who seats high, but most definitely looks low. Gracious and heavenly Father God, Lord, we just come to you, Lord. Just want to say thank you, Lord. Before we ask you for anything, Lord, we always want to thank you for everything, Lord. And Lord, right now, we just ask that you just be with us, Lord. Let your spirit just continue to saturate throughout this building, Lord, as your word gets ready to come forth, Lord. Lord, we just pray that your word be a word that is a blessing to your people, not only today, but for the days and weeks to come, Lord. Lord, I pray that they see all of you and less of me, Father God. And I echo the sentiment of John the Baptist and ask that I decrease, Lord, and that you increase, Lord. And I pray that not only will we be doing uh, hearers of the word, Father God, but most importantly, doers of your word, Father God. And we pray and ask these things in your mighty Son, Jesus' name. Let every heart say together, Amen. 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 For those of you who like to follow along with me today, uh, will you turn to the book of Lamentations, chapter 2? Uh, Lamentations is right between Jeremiah and Ezekiel in the Old Testament. Lamentations, chapter 2. We're just going to look at one verse today. Verse 17. Lamentations, chapter 2. You can also see it on the wall. Verse 17. Lamentation chapter 2, verse 17. Here a few pages turning. Give us all time. Amen. And it reads from the English Standard Word. It says, The Lord has done what he purposed. He has carried out his word, which he commanded long ago. He has thrown down without pity. He has made the enemy rejoice over you and exalted the might of your foes. Amen. If I may borrow your hearts and ears for just one moment, I would like to talk and use a subject on today, standing on business. Standing on business. Amen. You know, a few weeks ago, the uh, Summer Olympics just concluded, and uh, I don't know about you all, but I like watching the Olympics. Especially the summer leagues. Uh, United States has always pretty much dominated. Uh, I think they collected 126 total medals. They had 40 gold. Uh, actually tied with China this year for 40 gold medals. But the one particular sport I want to highlight was the men basketball. Uh, the United States team, they won gold, I think, the last two or three consecutive summer uh, events. But this time was a little bit different because they had a new player, one of the greatest of all time, Pastor Jay probably one of his favorite players, Stephen Curry, who played for the Golden State Warriors. Amen. He was a participant this year, and um, I like to listen to the interviews that, that lead up to uh, the actual game. So one of the things that the, the Team USA, they always say is that we're playing for gold. We're playing for gold. Now, there's three medals you can win in the Olympics, we know it's it's gold, silver, and bronze. But never boys have I ever heard them say, we're playing for silver or bronze. The mission and the task is, and the objective is, we're going to get that gold medal. All right. So, going to get the gold, it had to come with some challenges and obstacles. That's right. All right. We all know nothing in life is easy. That's right. 
even though they had one of the greatest assembled teams, the best, some of the best players of the entire National Basketball Association, they still were going against some of the best from other countries. So in the preliminary, they had some challenges against some, some, some opponents that people thought like, why, are they, why, are this a, why is this a tough challenge for USA? They played against uh, Australia. I think Australia pretty much was winning the whole game in the preliminaries up to the fourth quarter, but the United States found a way to win. I think they won by maybe five or six. Then they ended up playing South Sudan, and I think the United States projected to win by 20, but I think they beat them by maybe, it was less than 10, so it was a close game. And so everybody within the media was like, is this team going to be able to capture gold? All right. Fast forward to the, the actual uh, five on five games, uh, the, the, the real games when they got past the preliminary, they ended up facing Serbia. Serbia was supposed to be the, 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 the greatest foe or, the, or supposed to present the greatest challenge to the United States, which they did. It's a close game, but the United States prevailed. Get to the championship game, the United States had to play France in France. Because the, the, the thing, think about it now, the Summer Olympics was hosted in France. So you in your you in a foreign territory, everybody is rooting against you. And you gotta play this team in the championship. So the United States, the game how the game played out, the United States it was a back and forth seesaw seesaw there. And uh, the fourth quarter came around. It's a close game. Everybody, I, I'm sure it was a lot of Americans in panic mode, like. Man, I know the United States ain't about to lose the friends. <sighs> I you remember I highlighted a certain individual earlier. His name was Stephen Curry. Why the hell Stephen Curry the second? Amen. He got on the floor. It was less than three minutes left. That brother hit four consecutive three quarters and iced the game. And won the gold medal for Team USA. Amen. Now, Brother Preacher, where you going with that? More to the story is, what you believe in, mm. what you attach your belief to, mm. will determine the outcome of what you can have and what you can do. See, in Lamentations chapter 2, we see a group of individuals. This, this is the tribe of Judah, the southern kingdom. They had detached themselves from the Lord. All right, all right. So they didn't have the beliefs or solid foundations to stand upon. So at this point, they forgot who they were. Yeah, all right. And that's my first point today. Know who you are. Mm -hmm. Excuse me, I said that wrong. Know who you are. Amen. 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 That's somebody. Amen. Because we can know who we are and start digging holes for ourselves that we can't get out of. But once we know who we are, we got everything we need. Amen. So, God had already told Judah, if they didn't repent of their sins, then they were going to go into exile by the Babylon. He told them over and over and over and over and over again. In Jeremiah 25, he came down real hard. He said, hey, look. I got some bad people over here called Babylonians. Alright? I'm gonna send them to come take y'all captive for 70 years. If y'all don't get y'all act together. They thought God was blowing smoke. <laughs> so you know what they did? Kept on doing what they were doing. Amen. Kept on everything God told them not to do, they were still doing. Amen. One thing about our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, He always gives warning. Before the scripture. Amen. They had warning after warning after warning. Amen. And one thing about our God, He's the same today, yesterday, and forever. Amen. So sometimes, people, God will give us warning after warning after warning Amen. before the scripture comes. Y'all spend a little step in here. Right. 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 <laughs> so, thank you. So listen to what Paul said. Paul said in first, first, uh, not first, Colossians chapter one, verse fifteen. I just want to read one verse. Speak.
Speaking of Jesus, he said he is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. This is the one I, this is what I, I really want y'all to pay attention to. For by him, all things were created in heaven and earth. All right. So if all things were created by him, then don't that mean that all of us, all of them back, back then, were created by him? See, they lost and forgot who they were. Yeah. And they focused on who they were. Okay. See, there's a big difference between the two, man. Amen. And I'm going to give us some examples. Adam and Eve, when they ate from the, the tree of, of not good and evil, not as evil, they lost. Here's the thing about it. They operated independently from God. Right. Anytime we separate ourselves from God and want to do what we want to do, we end up finding ourselves somewhere where God never intended for us to be. Right. Think about it. Didn't he give them a warning? He told them they said, surely die if they do what they weren't supposed to do. And they did it anyway. They did it anyway. And I want us to look at, I, I want us just to examine a few people. I got two more candidates I'm going to bring in. In Acts chapter 5, I want us to look at verse number 3. Acts chapter 5, verse number 3. It's the story of Ananias and Sapphira. All right. All right. You know, we all know the book of Acts, the beginning, is the birth of the church of Acts. In chapter 2, we know that Peter came and, and he preached the gospel and say 3,000 souls were saved. So it was a lot of good things going on. All right. But God had to make an example out of two people because he needed to let the other people know that, hey, if y'all try me, we're going to have a problem. Amen. Amen. So if you go to Acts chapter 5, look at verse 3. I'm going I'm to I'm translate this story to a lot of day time. So, I tell, I, I want to share this. So, so God has recently blessed me with a new job. I work for the IRS now. Amen. Amen. I thank God for this opportunity. And so, I, I know the three little, the three little people that a lot of people don't want to hear call or not the window, but I'm going somewhere with this now. So, with the IRS, we got this tool called the IAT Compliance Suite Calculator. And this resource, and all it is is just a fancy, uh, high-powered calculator where I can configure, I can see every number, I can see every, I just translate this way. I can see what you bought on Amazon yesterday. <laughs> I can see what you ate for breakfast this morning. But anyway, Peter had what's called, a, a, in his time, he had an IAT uh, compliance suite calculator, which was called Home Speed. Hey man, somebody, what's up, So he walked up to the Ananias and he said, Hey brother, come here, see. He said, I need to ask you something. He said, You, you got a PPP loan? <laughs> Go ahead, preach it. He said, Hey, what you talking about? A PPP loan? He lied, not only did he lie to Peter, but most importantly, he lied to God. Amen. Amen. What God did after that, he struck the brother down and killed him instantly. Yes. Because at that time, let's go back to that, let's go back to the, uh, what was going on then. At that time, you know, I say it was the birth of the church age. So people were donating, uh, they were donating things to the disciples and the apostles to make sure they had everything they needed. So Ananias and Sapphira, they only gave half of what they were supposed to give. And they thought that wouldn't nobody go find out. Go ahead, preacher. But Peter had that calculator, <laughs> which was the Holy Spirit. And he whipped it out and he said, something ain't right here. <laughs> See, now we know, you, you know they say three, that three-letter word you're supposed to play with the IRA, but the most important three-letter word you're supposed to play with it though. And too many times, all of us in here are guilty for playing with God. I'm talking about myself too, y'all. So we need to realize, stop thinking that we getting over on people, or stop thinking that most importantly that we getting over on God. Because God sees everything that we do. My second point is, remember your receipts. Mm -hmm. 
So, this was a group of people who forgot God's word. You remember, God told us in Isaiah chapter 40, he said, the grass may wood, the flowers may fade, but the word of God will stand forever. So God always gives his children his word. Because that's the most important thing we can ever have on this side of the So, I just want us to look at a few people who killed their receipts. Let's look at Paul. Second Corinthians chapter 11. Y'all ain't got to turn with me. I'm just going to read a little bit of this. Verse 25. It just talks about everything that Paul went through. It said the brother was beaten three times. Say he was stoned. Say he was shipped. It say that he was robbed. It say that y'all get the gist of the brother went through a lot of things. He was on house arrest, right. and he found himself going from a God hater to a God lover. All right. So he had one of the most peculiar stories ever in the history of civilization in biblical times. And so when you fast forward to Philippians chapter 4 verse 13, we all know the verse that says, I can do all things in Christ and strengthen us. But when Paul wrote this, I want us to remember when he was at that current time. Paul was incarcerated in court reading. So how can you write a letter to some free people on the outside saying that you can do all things in Christ and strengthen me when you can't even free yourself from the halfway house you're in? This is what Paul was trying to emphasize. I will remember that he kept his receipts. So if you go up to verse number 12 in that same chapter, uh, uh, Philippians chapter 4, verse 12, Paul says, I learned how to be a base, and I learned how to be a bound. So basically what he said was, I learned how to live in a good situation, and I learned how to live in bad situations. So because I learned these things, I can do all things through Christ who empowers me to be able to do these things. So the brother kept his receipt. We got to keep our receipts. Because I guarantee you, everybody in here has been through something. But it ain't a matter, it's not about what you've been through. It's about who carried you from Egypt and have two small soldiers the river to get to the land of Haiti. That's what it's about. And let me move on. My third and final point, remember you have the victory. All right, all right. Remember you have the victory. Now, get back to Judah. Judah already had victory, but they didn't want the victory that God gave them. So because they didn't want it, God had to show them that, hey, y'all ain't gonna play with me. Because at the end of the day, I am God. So they found themselves somewhere they weren't even supposed to be. That's right. And so, I want us to look at what Paul said in Romans chapter 8, verse 36. Know in all these things that we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. We are more than conquerors. And that same thing applied to Judah, but they didn't want to be a conqueror. Sometimes, y'all remember Exodus chapter 14. Y'all remember. The Egyptians, they were, they was on the brink of getting ready to, I mean, excuse me, the Israelites, they was on the brink of getting ready to cross over. And they told Moses, man, Moses, we don't know what's over there, man. We'll be better off standing over here, angel. Sometimes we get too comfortable yeah. being in places we don't even need to be in. Yeah. See, God be trying to take us to the land of Canaan. But we so busy loving the fact that we shot the battle in Egypt. But God never intended 
for us, for Egypt to be home. He never intended for it to be home for us. So some of us today are living in defeat and agony in the land of despair because we are choosing not to live and stand upon the word of God that God had already promised to his truth. See, when God told David to be king, y'all remember 1 Samuel chapter 16, that story said that Jesse had eight sons. All right. Seven, seven was in the house. One was outside taking to the sheep. All right, all right. Samuel came around. He sees some tall, dark, handsome, handsome brothers, dark skinned brothers. And he said, Man, that's a good looking sword, Jesse. We're trying to see which one of these is going to be the king. He heard God say, Don't look upon the appearance of right. me. So when he heard the Spirit of God say this, he was like, it can't be neither one of these things. He said, Jesse, you got a little son or someone? Jesse said, yeah, oh, my youngest son out there the, in the, in the, attended to the sheep. Samuel went out there, and when he saw David, he probably said to himself, nah, it can't be you. And probably said to himself, now he tell God that. He probably said, no, nah, he can't be this one. But he knew it was him because God had already told him, don't look at the appearance. All right. Yeah. So if you already examined the other seven brothers, and God said that afterwards, process of elimination tells you that it has to be that. All right. I'm going somewhere, y'all follow me. That's all right. So you flip over to chapter 17. You get the story of David and Goliath. I want y'all to know, remember that. When David was anointed king, he was between the age of 16 and 19, so he was a teenager. Around the same day, he was going to go see Goliath. So the star said that Jesse told David, hey, you're going to take your brother some food and some water. That's how, that was his only responsibility. All he was supposed to do was take him some food and some water. Because for one, this is how we know David was, was, was a teenager. Because if he wasn't a teenager, he would have been in the army serving. All right. But because he wasn't in the army serving, he had to be a teenager. Yeah, right. Anyways, so he go out there, he see all these grown men terrified. Like, what's wrong with y'all? He look at them like, they put in the light, like, y'all scared of that brother? <laughs> y'all really scared of that brother on the Yeah, he nine feet tall. Yeah, he's supposed to be the world champion. Y'all not know who God is? Alright. Watch this, man. I know y'all know this story, but I'm finna highlight this story. Watch this. So Saul told David, man, what did you do? You too young. You, you, you can't go over there and find a giant. He said, man, you don't get out of my way. So David tried to put the arm on. The arm was too big for David. David said, man, I can't do that with this. He threw it out. And then uh so David said, you know what? Let me give me five small rocks. He give me a sling shack. And I'm gonna see what I can do with this. So David got his sling shack. He got his five rocks. We know the rest of the story. Goliath would have laughed like, what you gonna do with this, man? I got a sword. I got a I got a David knew it wasn't about him. It wasn't his battle to fight. <laughs> Remember that. God sent the brother up, or his dad sent the brother over there to, to, to go take some food and some water. But when he got over there, he had a divine assignment. Right. And his divine assignment was on behalf of God. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Let me go slay this 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 uh, uh this 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 man who died over here. So we know the story. He used the slave shot, he used the rock, killed the light. I got two questions for y'all in this story. Number one, it said David had five rocks. The mother knew it only took one to kill him. Why y'all think he still had four left? That's part of that story more than thing, man. All right. He had four left. Watch this, man. 
because Goliath had four brothers. They were there too. So in case they wanted to, they wanted to jump stupid at the young people's thing. They wanted to jump stupid. He was gonna pop them brothers out too. Chapter 17, it also says that David cut the light's head off. I could have sworn that brother had a slingshot, a slingshot and some rocks. Where did he get a sword from? <laughs> he, took, he took the what? No, it was a sword, it was a sword. I want y'all to think about that. Where did brother get that sword from? I get out of here. Isaiah 54 and 17 said, Woman gives you self power. What kind of women did Goliath have? <laughs> the same sword. Why did that? That Goliath thought he was going to kill David with it. David took the sword and cut his head off with it. So what am I saying? God has already given the victim of it. Before he even went out there. Alright, yeah. <laughs> Brother Pope been taking some crap in the water. <laughs> and now he finds himself on the high, glorifying God. Right. Because it wasn't because of David. So, get back to my point. David remember whose he was. He kept his receipts. Yeah. Because God had already told him, you are going to be king. And the third thing was he knew that God was going to give him victory. Yeah. So that brother stood on business. God wants his people in here today to stand on business. Yeah. Yeah. So he said, there was nobody else can do this. That I can't do this, I can't do this when God has already qualified. Right. All right. All we have to do is stand upon the word of God yes. and know that what God said is already funny. Amen. And as I close on today, I challenge you all to be persistent in God. Stand up on your faith today, knowing that our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ will one day return. Know that we're just like a cellar in the midst of a sea. And then one day we'll hear our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ say, Well done! Well done! Yeah. Well done, yeah. thy good and faithful servant. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, my brothers and sisters, we have work to do. Yes. And remember, when one bring glory to God's name, we've all brought glory to God's yeah. name. When one fall short of God's glory, we've all fallen short of God's yeah. glory. Together we stand, divided yeah. we fall. God bless you all. Amen. 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 And there will be one today. It feels the presence of the Lord saying, Today is your day. Please come and be a part of the greatest family ever. Come experience true love. Because the Bible says that we love him because he first loved us. Today will be a great day to just experience the goodness, the graciousness, the faithfulness of the Lord. Because one thing about it, mama ain't gonna lie with you. They ain't gonna lie with me here. Yeah. Cousin ain't gonna lie with me. Husband, wife they ain't gonna lie with me. Yeah. But the Lord gonna always be. So there's no relationship like the one between mankind and the Lord. Amen. So if you haven't experienced it yet, today will be a great day. The Lord wants you to give your heart to Him. Let us all 